Hey everyone, it's Ivan from KitBadger.com here to bring you another review and today I'm talking silencers. This one right here, which is the Erector 9 by Q. So what is the Erector 9? It is basically a lightsaber. Actually it's not. It is the big brother to this cute little guy right here, the 22 Erector. This is basically that, scaled up. So this is made for 9mm and just like its little brother, it is modular, meaning you can basically take apart these different baffles and increase or decrease them depending on what your application is. And some pretty, pretty cool stuff kind of built in. So I'll give you a little rundown on this guy. Right here is the Erector 9. It's made out of 1775 T6 aluminum as well as 17.4 stainless steel. Overall length is 8.7 inches. It can obviously be configured shorter and the weight is eight ounces. Outside diameter is 1.38 inches. Back here is your piston housing and moving forward from there, you have encapsulator actually made out of stainless steel as well as your blast baffle made out of stainless steel. After that, you have a number of different baffles moving all the way out before you get here to the end cap. This is a prototype pre-production model, the actual like real ones when they ship. This, while it is removable for servicing, will actually have a space in here where you can put wipes and then thread this back on if you want it to be super crazy quiet. I will have a little more to say on wipes in a second though. Quick note with respect to wipes. Yes, they can make it crazy quiet. Be aware, you are going to have more back pressure in whatever gun you're using. And on top of that, accuracy is gonna be terrible, horrible. You're basically sending the bullet through a piece of like gasket material before it leaves the end of the silencer. So they degrade as well. Why would anyone use them? Well, real application, usually shooting bad people in their beds at night. So you're probably not doing that. So aside from novelty, whatever. It's part of a requirement for this thing, which is why it got thrown in there. But just be aware, your accuracy is gonna be terrible. Play around with it if you want. As far as the Erector 9 user serviceable, yes, you do need to service it. So different things. One, you have the maintenance side, and then on the other side, you have configuration. Depending on how you wanna use this, you can basically scale it. It's gonna come with instructions. I'll just give you cliff notes real quick. You're gonna end up with these tools. These tools have these studs inside here and what it allows is for you to put it on here, close it, then put this thing in the vise. So all the pressure is on those studs. What that means is that when you turn this to either tighten it down or to loosen it, basically all the pressure again, is on just those studs. So it's not actually pressing in on the silencer body itself, which has the potential to damage it. It's just catching on these, what otherwise look like decorative cuts, but are actually functional, where basically those pieces grab so they can hold, whether you're gonna tighten it or loosen it either way and scale this thing. So right now it is set up, it has a pistol booster on here. You will have other options right now. That's what I have. It was my only option, this being a prototype. And then as you move forward, you get into all these different baffles, which you can remove, not usually by hand. I have this thing loosened just for the sake of the video, but these come apart and well, maybe not anymore for me right now, but you can basically take each individual one apart for maintenance and cleaning. And that's it, there's the baffle. And then at that point, you can add or remove however many you want and put this thing back together in shorter or longer configuration. By way of example, I will leave one off right now. And then per the instructions, basically you're gonna use, I forget what size socket right here. And I think it's like seven or eight foot pounds get this thing tightened down while this thing's in the vise with its tool and you're good to go. So you can add or remove baffles. Where does that come into play? What's the big deal about modularity? 
Um, it's flexibility. And I will say, sometimes with respect to modularity, it seems kind of gimmicky, like the way it comes off. A lot of times I honestly think it's literally thrown in there as a gimmick. This, I will say, is one of the few times, whether it is this or the Erector 22, where I think there's some validity to the modularity, one of which being putting on a pistol. So yes, in case you are unfamiliar, by virtue of science, as we make this thing shorter and remove baffles, it's going to be louder. It will. It'll get a lot louder a lot quicker. But why would anyone want this to be short? Well, if you've ever shot pistol silencers, lots of times they're obnoxious, like they're huge. They're just really big and bulky. And so this can alleviate that. And you're like, well, it's gonna be louder. Yes, it will be. There is no free lunch. But think about it in context to a bedside gun. You have this on your nightstand. Well, this will allow you to, God forbid, happens, but if you need to actually break shots inside your house, you will break shots and you'll still be able to hear your spouse, maybe your kids in the other room. You'll still maintain situational awareness, which that's pretty huge. Now, granted, do I want this really quiet? Yeah, and then put all the baffles on there. Just be aware, if it's on a pistol, it might get obnoxiously long. The other place it can be advantageous is shooting at night under nods. Am I really worried about sound reduction? Because chances are there's going to be some other people with me. It might get really loud depending on what they're equipped with. Or is what's more important a signature reduction? So can I end up with fewer baffles to basically give me just that signature reduction with respect to visual signature more so than sound? And same thing with the 22 Erector. Obviously a little bit different use case, but personally I love that thing because I can reduce the baffles if I'm shooting it on something, especially shooting subsonic, don't need very many baffles and it's plenty quiet to the ear versus maybe I'm out there, I'm going to be shooting all day with my boys, I'll put all the baffles on there and it'll be whisper quiet all day long so no one needs ear pro. Different applications. Having said all that, what has been my experience with the Erector 9? Well. Initially, took this one out on the Coast to Coast 2020 road trip. Took it all the way across the country, had this thing on a high point carbine for people to shoot. It was a blast. It was a lot of fun. And since then, I've put in a lot more time, a lot more rounds through it. Actually shot it on said high point carbine in a Amtac shooting three-day night vision course. Thing did awesome there. And since then, I've shot it on a number of different posts.
right here is three supers loaded on top of three subs. It's pretty sweet, especially the subs. Right here is three supers on top of three subs. Pretty awesome. And three more supers on top of three more subs. Pretty sweet. Having said all that, what are my thoughts on the Erector 9? I think this thing is rad. It is a ton of fun to shoot, and I really love how lightweight it is. It sounds amazing, and on top of all that, I like the modularity. This, for me personally, even though it can be fun to shoot with all the baffles on here, it's kind of obnoxious to shoot on a pistol. If I want a pistol, I want, like, a pistol. And to that end, being able to reduce this down to only a couple baffles, basically take the bite off of the report of a pistol, I think that is incredibly useful. Again, going back, depending on the application. I think that's pretty cool. And then in addition to that, threading this thing onto the end of pretty much any host, whether it's a high point carbine or not, you end up with eight ounces at the end of that gun, which is pretty insignificant. Like it's not heavy. This thing is absolutely lightweight and it does a great job with suppression. So no, pretty stoked on this thing. If you're interested in picking up a Rector 9, you can get them for just under $900. Color-wise, they will come both clear anodized as well as black, because black is the new black. And on top of that, when it comes to actually mounting options, obviously half by 28 piston for shooting it on pistols. And they also have a nine millimeter cherry bomb adapter, direct thread, and they will have a tri-lug mount as well. So plenty of different options. If you end up picking one up, let me know how it's done for you. And if you appreciate my content and want to support it, greatly appreciate it, whether it's liking and sharing videos or going over to kitbadger.com, picking up stickers, KBAT target pads, or supporting me directly through Patreon, definitely appreciate that as well. And if you have questions for me, more than happy to answer them. Probably not in the YouTube comments, but over there at Patreon, we also have a Discord. Happy to answer all those questions. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.